You know, one of the things that was really intriguing and inspiring as regards to your story was how you were able to get two job offers as an HR um, officer over six months before the end of your master's program. Honestly, now you mentioned that you had like 12 different rejections before you got your first you know, job interview invite. I would like to ask, um, what were the things you actually did differently on your dating application uh, in regards to what were the things you changed on your CV? What were the so I'm here with me, Roland. Thank you, Roland, for tuning in. Um, Roland currently works as an HR um, officer here in the UK and is going to share with us how he was able to secure two job offers as an HR officer with uh, two visa sponsorship. He's going to share a story and I was able to translate from being a student here in the UK to working as an HR officer. So if you think this will interest you, don't go anywhere, keep watching till the end. And if you're coming across my channel for the very first time, my name is Daniel, and on this channel, I share everything amazing. <laughs> so click on the red subscribe button to join the amazing Queen family. And for my channel subscribers, thank you guys for being here. I really do appreciate you guys. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. So once again, thank you, Wulan, for joining in. And I think I need to say this again. Congratulations on your job, Wulan, as an HR officer. And, you know, one of the things that was really intriguing and inspiring as regards to your story was how you were able to get two job offers as an HR um, officer over six months before the end of your master's program. Honestly, seeing someone getting that kind of, you know, achievement, get that kind of job role, even before completion of your master's program, I think it's something that's going to inspire people and people would love to know how you were able to achieve all of that. So the first question I'll ask you, Roland, is um, what was your job role previously in Nigeria and how you think um, your job role in Nigeria was able to influence your being able to get a job as an HR officer here in the United Kingdom? Um, thank you very much, uh, Daniel, for having me. Firstly, I would say I don't think my job in Nigeria influenced the uh, me getting a job here in the UK. While in Nigeria, I work as, a, as an administrative officer as well as uh, a quality control officer. So looking at the transition from a quality control officer to that of an HR officer, I don't think it, it, it helped in any way. But one thing I was able to portray is how those experiences shaped me and prepared me in becoming an uh, HR officer in the sense that the skills I um, acquired from those job roles, especially while I was uh, an administrative officer as well. So it, didn't, it was not the major factor, but it played a role. I would say it played a role. Yeah. Oh, lovely, lovely. Thank you for sharing that. Now, um, for someone who is planning to get um, a job role as an HR officer, yeah, in the United Kingdom. I'd like to ask you, what are some of the skills and some of the qualification one need to have before you can, you know, decide to, you know, go into that particular line? Okay, for for the qualification, CIPD is a requirement, definitely. Okay. You, will, you should have CIPD, but it doesn't stop you from applying for HR roles if you don't have that um, qualification yet. You can get an entry-level HR job without the qualification at first, but to go in that role and uh, be an authority, you should definitely have uh, your CIPD qualification. So for me, I, I've, I'm not yet... An, um, an HR certified professional in the sense that I'm still undergoing my CIPD uh, qualification, which I hope to complete in July. But the fact that I have started that qualification gave me an advantage, I believe, in um, getting a job in HR. Okay, well, that's lovely. So aside from the qualification, what other skills do you think one should have, one should portray before you know, going ahead to apply for an HR role? Yeah, you should be able to uh, demonstrate that you have uh, good communication skills in terms of verbal and written, um, influencing and uh, persuasive skills, problem solving skills as well, and uh, be able to identify a problem and provide solutions to it, and also accuracy. Yeah, oh, that's, that's really fascinating. And now, if I get it clearly, you're saying that if I'm planning to apply for an HR role now, I really don't need those certifications to be able to land a job. However, in order for me to grow as an authority in that particular field, then I definitely need to check out CIPD for me to, you know, build my um, authority, which is really fascinating and amazing. And I would also like to ask, you know, one of the things I've always been curious about was, you know, how you were able to get 
a job as an HR, of which one of them was willing to sponsor you, even before you complete your program. I know you got one of those job roles over six months before the start of the program. How were you able to do this? How you were you able to achieve this even while still a student? Uh, for me, I was more intentional about what I want. So uh, I'm the kind of person that thinks long term. So when I came to the UK, I targeted this. I don't. I don't say targeted, but I just you know develop interest in this organization. So firstly, what I did was to. Um, get a part-time role with them okay. and given that uh, my career's MBA with professional practice gave me the opportunity to have a work placement, one year work placement. So it was an opportunity for me to develop that experience to get that experience in HR. So one thing I did was to you know approach the manager, although I was not in an HR role part-time but okay. given that really um, an employee, definitely most organizations will not want to, you know, uh, reject that um, offer, that request, you know, to build your experience or your career in a different you know, department within the organization. So I approached the, uh, sent emails to the managers and they obliged and they said, okay, find that, okay, just come in and that was just it for me. So that experience gave me the exposure I needed, you know, to start building my HR uh, profile. So that was it for me, really. And also knowing that I, that was the career path I wanted to, you know, grow in. At, I I knew that CIPD is a requirement. So I just started right still going through my MBA program and all of that. I just started uh, enrolled. And I enrolled and I started studying for my CIPD level 7 qualification at the same time. So this was how I was able to, you know, just build my own career path in terms of, you know, diving into the HR profession. No, that's actually interesting. And, you know, I understand that, you know, getting placements is one of the ways or one of the things that really influence or help one in landing a permanent job. And um, which I believe is definitely one of the things that was helpful during your um, job application and job search. Now, I would say, despite the fact that you had your um, placement done during your MBA program, were you able to easily transit into um, the HR role or did you experience any rejections or because you had placement, automatically you're just getting different offers? No, it, it wasn't it wasn't automatic. It wasn't automatic. I think I got one rejection. That was the first one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So after that because that was my first professional HR interview. So okay. I got a rejection uh after the first interview I, I attended. So after that the rest I had uh, two different offers immediately after the first mm -hmm. one. More like building that first uh, experience gave me the experience i needed you know to work on and for other hr interviews but prior to this time before i uh, got into the organization that gave me the opportunity to do my placement i had 12 uh, rejections in terms of uh, application and all of that so if you're intentional about having a particular going into a particular uh, field in the UK yeah, and you start experiencing rejections at first, I would just want to say that you should not be discouraged. You know, you should learn from those experiences. You know, definitely for every failure, there is something to learn. You get so don't feel that oh, it's the UK environment is just tied to me or, or whatever. Just you know. Learn from those experiences, you know, work on your next application, make it better, and you will get definitely get what you want. Yes, yeah, thank you, thank you so much for uh, actually saying that because I understand the journey towards becoming a professional here in the UK comes with a lot of rejections. Honestly, I had my own share of rejections also, and I'm sure um, you also did. Now, you mentioned that you had like 12 different rejections before you got your first you know, job interview invite. I would like to ask, um, what were the things you actually did differently on your dating application uh, in regards to what were the things you changed on your CV? What were the things that really helped you during the interviews? What did you do prior to your interview? And what, what, what were the things you would advise one to do during the interview for this job role? Okay, the things I did was, 
<clears throat> after those many rejections, I started, you know, to ask questions, to, you know, do my own research, what's going on, you know, and um, I, I found out that, okay, they have essential desirable criteria, a job description and all of that. So your experience, your previous experience should be able to match at least a very large extent the job description you are applying for. And as well, you should be able to justify how you meet the desirable and essential criteria. So that was where the changes I made in my CV, ensuring that my uh, experience aligns with the job description I'm applying for. And as well, I'm able to justify how I meet the desirable and essential criteria as well. Mm -hmm. And also my motivation for applying for the role in my supporting statement. So all of these... We had, all of these were part of the uh, things that made the difference for me. Okay, so for, for your interviews, yeah, can you just give us like a little bit insight on, you know, some of the things that one should look out for when going for some of these interviews? Now, we understand that for your CV, you need to ensure that your CV is tailored towards every job description you're applying for. Now, if I'm able to get an interview invite, what do I need to do prior to that interview? What are the kind of questions or some of the things I should look out for before going for my interviews? Okay, uh, from an HR perspective, first of all, what what I would advise is you should know the organization you are applying into. Yeah, first sure. of all, own research, uh, know their core values. Then also uh, know likely questions. Try to study for likely questions that would uh, that they ask in your of. Uh, in, your, in that field or that particular uh, position you are applying for. And one thing that you should do is also prepare uh, scenarios, questions, answers to scenario questions. Because, yeah, yeah what I have uh, observed in the UK is also you being able to not just say, I have done this, I have done that. It's you being able to give case studies, give examples of how you wow. know of how, you know, not just I have done this, I'm give examples of how you've actually done what you say, okay. what, what you what you say you've done. So that was, for, that, that was it for me, being able to, you know, justify how, you know, I carried out a particular uh, task, what you did. First of all, what was the problem? What did you do? You know, what was the result and what would you do? differently you get if given that a, a same task what would you do differently what did you learn from it so being able to give case scenarios of for probably most all of the questions that you are asked you know would would make a huge difference huge difference wow that's that's really really key to be honest um i think that's one of the things i also learned during my you know my interviews being able to you know not just tell them what i've done but you know, how I was able to do those things and what was the outcome of the things I did and what I would think I would have done, you know, um, differently. So um, lastly, Will, and I'm going to ask you this question. Can you please, you know, just share with us what advice you would give um, an international student who is looking at going into the HR line or someone who is trying to, you know, transit into human resources? What advice would you give as regards every other process starting from certification? What advice would you personally give to someone who is looking at going into this field? Okay, I would say uh, whatever experiences you've had before, try to tailor it to meet your the job description and also um, try to enroll for CIPD. It could be level five, level seven, depending on your capacity or what you think you feel you, you, are, you want to do. If it's a level five or the level seven, you can study online. There are platform in which you just enroll and you need to study online. And also, if you want face-to-face -face, uh, classes, there are also uh, colleges that also offer that as well. So it's just for you to be able to be intentional about what you want, be strategic about it, which organization do you want to get into. For me, I was intentional about the organization I wanted. So know the organization you want to get into, be strategic about it, build your profile, CIP, uh, CIP uh, certification is a requirement, but for an entry level role, it's there are organizations that would easily consider you for it, depending on how you, you know, you present your application forward. 
so it's just for you to be able to know how to uh, structure your CV or your application to meet the desirable and essential criteria as well. So even if you don't have CIPD, don't feel disadvantaged. Yeah, yeah. Just for you to be able to demonstrate that you're working towards it. So, yeah. Well, th thank you. Thank you so much for that as well. And um, I also just want to ask this question in case someone might be interested in um, this particular information. And for someone who is looking at applying for an HR role here in the UK, um, what website or what platform would you recommend um, one to visit constantly to be able to get a job role in this particular field? LinkedIn, LinkedIn definitely. Yeah, for professionals, come on, they can be. You can't want. You don't want to be. You can't be a professional. You know, on LinkedIn. So LinkedIn definitely. That job roles. I mean, I came across so many job roles on LinkedIn that helped me as well. And uh, any such job website is there. It's a good one as well for you to you know look into. Then um, indeed, yeah. And also, if you have. Uh, if you feel you want to really, because I know there are people that really want to get into a particular organization, they're like, I want to work here, you know, so go on their websites, you know, check their, check for vacancies there. And yeah. if you are looking for internship or work placement and you want to get into a particular organization, you can go on their website, you know, look for an email that you can, you know, just send your cover letter or, you know, that you can just probably inquire. Okay, I want the, um, I'm a student of Sosa University and uh, I'm to undergo a work placement for a period of time and I have passion to work in this field and I have always fancy to be in this organization, to work for this organization and just to get this experience. And just, you know, you can reach out to them. They don't have to be that, you know, vacancy first, sure. especially for a work placement or for internship. You can, and you fancy the organization, you can just send an email and, you know, Hopefully they will respond. Yeah, well, honestly, thank, thank you so much, Roland, for sharing this. I've actually got lots of value from this. And by the way, for those who don't know, before I got my first job offer, after my interview invite, I got to call. Um, I had to call um, Roland to you know ask some questions. You know, being a professional and a leader in this field of job search, <laughs> I had to ask some questions, and I had you know a fantastic session with him. You know, a lot of questions being answered and. You know, I would say those information he provided were one of the things I was able to, you know, make use of in my interviews, you know, for me to get my job roles. Honestly, these are some of the information that many people don't have access to, and you need to ask the right question from the right people, and Holland is one of the right people, to be honest. So I'm going to put his um, LinkedIn profile at the description of this video, so you can just check it out, connect with him on LinkedIn, you know, and ask your questions first and from, you know, the professional. Thank you, Roland, so much for, you know, tuning in. I really do uh, appreciate your time to share this information and your experience, uh, your experience with us. Thank you so, so much. So guys, that's all about um, this video. I'm going to share with us the experience from moving, um, so uh, from being a student to moving um, to a professional in the HR field. And honestly, guys, amazing content like this will be coming up on this channel to further, you know, reinforce the fact that some things are actually possible you know i understand we are looking for visa sponsorship and the truth is there are a lot of opportunities out there for us as immigrants here in the united kingdom so guys if you're coming across my channel for the first time i have to click on the subscribe button click on the red subscribe button below to join the amazing growing family and for my third subscribers thank you guys for being here i really do appreciate you guys so this will be the end of this video and i'll see you guys in my next video thank you